Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. It's another day the Lord has made and it's a day that we have an opportunity to do something for Him. And we need to be busy about the Lord's work as uh, we know Jesus was busy doing the Lord's work and we should be doing that as well. And so that kind of leads me into the lesson for today called Doing as Little as Possible. And some people ask the question, what is the least we can do and still make it to heaven? Some people are trying to figure that out. And sadly, many people want to know that answer. And the answer is very simple. I'll tell you, if you are asking this question, you're not going to make it to heaven. I mean, that, that's, that's going to be obvious as we go through our lesson. See, we live in a world where many people just do the very least of any project just to get by. And yeah, we, we see this. There, there's those people at work who just do what we think is just the bare minimum. They don't put forth any effort and they, they do what they can to complete their task, but they don't do any extra. They don't make sure it's right or anything like that. And we get frustrated with them. I mean, people who work hard and trying to do the best job they can, they get frustrated by people like this. And because they are doing most of the work and the, these lazy ones are not. And the thing is, the lazy ones get paid the same amount. And that just doesn't seem fair. So we, we get upset about that. And if they can get by with doing a little possible, then what's to keep me from doing as little as possible? I'll still have my job and I'll still be able to make the money that I would have made anyway. So why put forth the effort? Some people see this and they kind of adopt those lazy ways. And uh, of course, that, that doesn't help the company and it doesn't help at work. And certainly it doesn't help these people in the spiritual realm. See, what is sad is that some who call themselves Christians are no different. I mean, these people say that they are faithful and are trying to please God and go to heaven, but their attitude and action demonstrate apathy, laziness, and a misunderstanding about what the Christian life is all about. See, the Christian life is about service and doing your very best. And most of these people will not ever break a sweat in their service to God. I mean, just... If it's convenient, it, it, it's, they kind of treat it like that streetcar or the bus. If it's going my direction, I'll jump on it. But if it's not, then I'll take a different path. And that's how most people seem to act. And that seems to be their attitude. And we, we learn their, their attitude from their behavior. See, the Bible teaches us there must be an effort. Uh, can anyone suggest that our Lord Jesus would have said, well, when it comes to doing my Father's will, I will do as little as possible. Well, see, we know better. I mean, we know that's not the case. And the question is, why do so many choose to do such? I mean, remember the parable of the talents, what happened to the one talent servant who did as little as possible? I mean, he was called a wicked, lazy, worthless slave and was cast into the outer darkness, Matthew 25 and verse 30. And so for a lot of people, apparently there is a misunderstanding of the scriptures for these lazy people. They haven't really dove into the scriptures. They do not know their Bibles well enough because they do not read their Bibles. And that becomes quite evident by the way that they live and the way they behave. And uh, we might say even though they might carry Bibles maybe into the church building, it's obvious they don't use them. I mean, they, they don't ever turn to the passage of Scripture when the preacher says, let turn over to such and such a passage. They don't do that. They just let their Bible sit there. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, a little badge that they carry around with them. Hey, I have my Bible. And that's about all they do with it. And what do they do when they leave the building? They put the Bible in the same spot and they pick it up next Sunday morning when they come back to church. And that's about all the use they get out of the Bible. And so, see, a member of the church that does not give their best effort in serving the Lord is failing to do what God expects of all of his followers. 
I mean, Paul told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Now, can you just picture Paul writing, well, just do as little as possible and you'll be okay. Well, that's what people want to think, but that's not the way it is. That's not reality. No, Paul told them what to do, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In Romans 12, 11, he says, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And so that's what we're supposed to be doing, not lagging behind in diligence. We'll talk about diligence in a little bit. In Titus 2.14 says, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Some versions say zealous for good works. We're supposed to be doing good works. And if we're not doing that, we're not the type of people God expects us to be. So, do these verses agree with laziness? I mean, does laziness fall into these categories of what we just read? And the answer is no. I think everybody knows that. Most of you listening probably are very familiar with this, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. You are probably the type that uh, is trying to do your best for the master, and you get frustrated when your brethren don't put forth any effort. So that's what happens. See, Jesus said that his work was to do the Father's will. You know, John 4, 34. And later he said, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. John 6, 38. And so we are told to imitate Christ, or those who imitate Christ, like Paul said, be imitators of me as I am of Christ, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. And so no true imitator of the Son of God will approach God's work with the idea of doing as little as possible. And so uh, those people who try and do as little as possible, they're not an imitator of the Son of God. I mean, they, they don't even, probably don't even know what he did uh, for the most part. And so when Jesus was talking about entering a certain gate in Luke 13, 24, he said, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. I mean, so th this is very similar to what he said on the Sermon on, on the Mount about the broad way and the narrow way. The narrow way is, is straight and few will be on it. The broad way is uh, many will be on that. And that leads to destruction. So these lazy, do as little as possible people should not get their hopes up about living with God in eternity. I mean, they do. I mean, it's sad that they do because they misunderstand it. And if they are not striving to live for Jesus now, they are not going to be living with God eternally. Most of these people are, are more in, enthralled by the world and enraptured by the world, and they, they want to be a friend of the world. And the world is their place. That's their domain. And the Bible teaches us the world is not our domain, where we should be. Our domain should be in the realm of spiritual uh, relationship with God and Jesus. And if we're enthralled with the world, we cannot be a friend of, of God. You know, uh, James 4 and verse 4 tells us that. And, and so, the, members who try, the member who tries to just sneak by, I mean, what are they? You know who they are. And yes, we're aware of them. And maybe an honest person might say, well, maybe I fit in this category. But let, let's, let's describe them. They're the ones who attend once a week. And yes, they do demonstrate uh, they don't get much Bible in their daily lives. I mean, they're the ones who only get Bible by what the preacher might read in his sermons. I mean, if they tolerate the sermon even. And the ones who do not help around the building. I mean, there's things that need to be done around the building and greeting others and they just don't do it. They stick to themselves, and then sometimes they just get out as fast as possible. And they, they leave uh, as soon as possible so they don't have to deal with these people. I mean, they can't stand being around Christians, but yet they want to spend eternity with them. 
I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And so the ones who feel if they have taken the Lord's Supper, that they've done their duty to God. I've seen people, we've all seen people who who sneak into the back of the building, partake the Lord's Supper at the right time, and then just leave before anything else they can do, before singing any songs, before listening to a sermon or anything like that, before greeting others. I mean, they, they do that, but they feel they've done their duty to God. And of course, we could just go on and on, but apparently this person does not appreciate what Jesus did for him or her. And Jesus had to take himself all the way to the cross. That's what Jesus did. He left heaven and went all the way to the cross. And many of these people will not take up their own cross. You know, Jesus said that's one of the requirements. Take up your cross daily and follow me. And Christ willingly went to the cross. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us that. And we're reminded he bore our sins in his own body. You know, 1 Peter 2, 24, which he was actually quoting from Isaiah 53. And he loved us even though we were worthless sinners. And that's what he says. God loved us. He sent his son, John 3, 16, and Romans 5, 8, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so that, that's demonstrating a great love that Jesus had for us. Now, after all that Jesus did for you, you still do as little as you deem necessary to still make it to heaven? I mean, that's a question that really requires some reflection, and hopefully that's a rhetorical question where you really ought to know the answer to that. Doing as little possible is not going to get anyone to heaven. And are you still showing him gratitude for what he did? I mean, let's face it, you're playing with the world, but you come in on Sunday morning and say, I love Jesus, sing a few songs, and you say, thank you, Jesus, for all you do, and then you go back into the world. I mean, that, that's not going to cut it either, folks. And God's grace did so much for you, yet you do so little for him. You do so little for God. You don't even share God with others. The, the people you spend your time with, you talk about all sorts of garbage and sports and weather and politics and, and things of this world, and yet you won't bring up Jesus or God in your conversation. I mean, how are you sharing God's message with others? Well, the answer is you're not. See, here's where you become the problem. If I'm talking to you, you are the problem. And... We have to be aware of that. I mean, if you're not one of the problems, you need to be focusing on those who are the problem and you need to be talking to them and encouraging them to get with the program. So we all have a duty to encourage and edify one another. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 And we have the duty to stir up one another unto love and good works. Hebrews 12.24 so yes, we have responsibility. The faithful have a responsibility to those who are less faithful. Uh, Romans 14, Romans 15 tells us, we who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and help them come to a better understanding. And a lot of times we look at set brother so-and-so who's not putting forth any effort and well, he'll, he'll stand before God. I mean, that's the wrong attitude to have folks. I mean, if our brethren are displaying an attitude, a cavalier attitude, a lazy or apathetic attitude, it's time for us to go work with them and try and help them come around and start serving God more faithfully. That is our duty as a Christian, not to sit back and say, well, well God will sort it all out in the end. No, our duty is to help people get to heaven. And that certainly does not help people get to heaven. So maybe you're joining the crowd of the lazy, worthless slave. I mean, that's a hard pill to swallow. See, the one who does as little as possible is still encouraging and teaching others. But what are they teaching them? They, and it, it can be you, are teaching that you can be lazy in serving God and still make it to heaven. Well, that's the wrong thing to teach, and it is a falsehood because there are other lazy ones who will follow your example. I mean, they're not doing that much, so why should I? I mean, so uh, a, lot of, not, a lot of new converts, they're looking up to, they look around and see, okay, well, if everybody in this room is in good standing with the church, I can see who I want to be like. 
And they, they see those who are lazy and apathetic, and, well, if they can get away with it, I can get away with it. And some of them do that. Others, uh, they, they look to the strong ones and the faithful ones and those who are always quoting Scripture and Bible class and things like that. Well, I want to be like them. I mean, that, that's what we should encourage people to be. And so we, we do set an example. No matter what we're doing, we do set an example for others. Now, it's either going to be a good example or it's going to be a bad example. So what do you show the world? What are you demonstrating to the world? Do you demonstrate that you believe in God or do you demonstrate that you could care less about God? Well, that, that's something you have to know. See, the church needs workers to survive. We know that. And locally, we need parents who teach their children well. I mean, that, that, that would be good, good thing. And we need strong members who know their Bible well enough to guard against false teaching. You know, 2 Timothy 2.15, we need preachers that will tell it like it is and not be the men pleasers that lazy people love. You know, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4 talks about that. And so God needs workers. Just like Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. And so we, he said, pray that the Lord of harvest will send workers. Well, that's, that's a problem with a lot of us. We, we know there's lost souls out there. There's a harvest out there that we need to try and get, but we keep praying that God will send somebody else. <laughs> I mean, let, let's face it. Now, so far, I've only mentioned the word diligence one time, and that's a quotation from, one, one, from the, the passage that we used. But the word diligence, as used in the New Testament, and it's there quite often. I mean, it would surprise you how, how often that word is actually there and how quickly people just gloss over that word and don't pay attention to it. Be diligent at it. And the word means to make haste and make every effort. See, we expect this out of our sports heroes. I mean, we, we know that. They sign a big contract. We expect them to do a great job. And when they do not do what we know they're capable of, guess what? We're ready to trade them or let them go. I mean, they had potential, but they just didn't use it. And so apparently it is okay for us to be lazy and slothful in our service to God. And does that sound about right for many? I mean, it, it does. They're that way. And, of course, we expect... Uh, our pharmacist to be diligent in filling out the prescription. We expect our doctor to be diligent and run all the tests necessary to find out what's wrong with us. We expect diligence in just about every walk of life. We expect people to do their best. We hate imperfection. We hate unquality. And yet we, we kind of expect quality but when it comes to our service to God, a lot of people don't put forth any effort, don't put forth and make any quality effort in serving him. So there's a passage in Hebrews 6, verses 9 through 12. It says, but beloved, we are convinced of better things concerning you and things that accompany salvation, though we are speaking in this way. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love you have shown toward his name in having ministered and is in still ministering to the saints. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. See, that word diligence Show the same diligence. Why? So you can have the assurance of hope until the end. People who don't put forth diligence in their daily walk with God, they don't have that hope. It's a false hope if they have any hope at all. But if we're going to realize that hope, we know we're going to have to be busy for the master. Now, if I've, if I've been describing you it's time for you to make some changes in your life. You need to get busy serving God, reading his Bible, learning what God expects of you, and actually doing it. And so get busy working for the master and stop doing as little as possible and do more. 
And you know who the others are who are doing as little as possible. Encourage them to do more as well. And remember, God knows what you're capable of doing and what you're actually doing. Just like we mentioned that one talent servant, the master saw potential in him. I mean, he didn't say how many servants the guy had, but he probably had quite a few, but he saw potential in these three. So, and so he gave him a chance to reach that potential. But he did, that servant did as little as possible, and because of that, he was condemned for such. Do we not think that we will be treated the same way when we stand before God in judgment? So, will you continue doing as little as possible? And if so, you will not make it to heaven. I mean, that's just a reality. We have to get, sometimes we have to get people's attention. Sometimes it, it's like a, a, a farmer had a stubborn mule and uh, wouldn't do anything for him until he walked up and struck him with a two by four across the head. And then the mule started doing what he was supposed to do. Well, I'm not suggesting we start hitting people with two by fours, but we do need to be speaking to them and letting them know the truth. If they're doing that, they're not going to make it to heaven. Just about everybody you go to church with thinks that they're going to heaven. But some do not act like they're supposed to be acting. And there, there's a chance they're going to miss out on heaven. So our job as members of the church is to help each other get to heaven. And sitting back and saying, well, well let God figure it out. No, that's, that's not what we should be doing. Helping people to get to heaven means we get involved and guide them. And, I mean, let's face it, if they, if they don't like the encouragement, chances are they're just going to leave. They don't want it. They don't want to deal with that. They don't want to improve any. And so they're going to get tired of people harping on them. Or, or as I heard one person say, uh, we don't like going every Sunday to church and getting pounded on by the preacher. Well, if they're not living right, yeah, they're going to be pounded on. Their toes are going to be stepped on. Their hearts are going to be pricked. The preacher's going to get into their brain. And if they don't like it, well, well what's their options? Well, they either change their ways to fit in with, like they're supposed to, or they're just going to leave and depart. And yes, I, I, I imagine you can talk to just about any preacher, and they would probably tell you the same thing. Some people don't want the, the blunt truth, and they don't want the honest truth. All right, so that's going to be our lesson for today, and Lord willing, we'll be back with another lesson, and uh, you have a good day. Bye-bye for now.